Hi, I'm Jeffers Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to light a scene with accurate sun and sky illumination in Death Studio using NVIDIA iRay. In the previous video I've showed you how to do something like this in uh, Death Studio 4.9. This is a character that is uh, being put into a scene via an HDR image, and in this video we're going to show you how to do this uh, without the HDR image. Sometimes you may not want to see the actual HDR image in the background, in which case we can just switch Draw Dome off. And then all we get is the effects of that image. So in that respect, it doesn't matter how good or bad the image is. So you can then either work with the image that comes with the default Dash Studio scene, or if you're thinking, I don't want to use any HDR image, I just want to use the sun and sky at a particular point in time, then you can do that. And um, we're using the same character here, same pose, same everything. All we have in the scene is the Genesis 3 female figure and one camera through which we look, and the camera's headlamp is switched off. So all the lighting that we're getting does not come from any lights that we set in the scene. It does come from what we're doing here under Render Settings in the Environment tab. So the Environment Map we've discussed in the previous video, if we head over to the actual Environment tab, we see all the options from Dome and Ground, but we also see an extra one, which is at the top here, um, Dome and Scene, and under Environment Mode. Now the thing is, uh, that I hadn't actually spoken about that before. Dome and scene means it renders both the dome lights, so in our case the environment map, as well as any parametric lights I've added to my scene, like I've shown you in the first video. But I can also set this to dome only, in which case any scene lights that I've set parametric lights here in my scene would be ignored, and only the HDR image from the dome will be rendered. Or I can set this to scene only, in which case only my scene lights are being rendered and the dome lights from the HDR image is being ignored. And this is exactly the effect that we're getting. So a, a perfect um, silhouette, in case you ever need that. Very, uh, very exciting. But this is what would happen if you don't have any lights in the scene. And that's kind of the reason why in positioning and when you when you're at the camera and all that, they have this headlamp switched on so that we don't see just this or pitch black room, but actually something that we can position our characters with. But I can also set this to a fourth option, which is sun sky only. And if I do that, then my options here under dome completely change. So I no longer have an environment map that I can check here. In fact, let me go back to Dome, so whittle the options down a little bit more, and then Dome I'll open up and I'll open the Sun Sky option, and I can even open that up and I can whittle this down a little bit more. There's so many options. I'm going to focus on the first one here, Direction. So this setting gives us some light here with a good shadow, but it's completely different than to what we've just seen, uh, the render that had the environment map on there. And that is because this one now simulates the sun and the sky. But the principle is still exactly the same. If I uh, bring your attention back to the Blender thingy that I've, that I've made, uh, this is exactly the same um, setup here. So we have a half dome in the center of which stands our character. And this dome is extremely large, so we wouldn't be able to uh, move our camera to the edges of the, of the dome. I suppose we can, but I've never tried it, and I don't recommend you do either, because maybe you'll fall off the edge of the world. I don't know. Anyway, and it has uh, just one plane here. Um, as to, to simulate the ground. And um, the sun is projected onto the inside of the dome in the accurate position of a time and date and longitude and latitude. So the sun could be here, or the sun could be here, or the sun could be, or the sun could be here, or, you know, anywhere where the, where the sun would be accurate. Now, in that studio, this is what that looks like. Uh, SS means um, sun and sky, longitude and latitude. SS day, same thing, sun, sun and sky day, and sun and sky time. And we even have the <laughs> universal time code offset here if we wanted to do that. So uh, to show you the effect, 1800, this is military time, this is 6 o'clock in the evening. If we were to have a look at what this 
uh, what at this longitude and latitude, what the time, what the sun would have looked like at twelve o'clock, much different. Or maybe we can even see what it was look, what it looked like at uh, nine in the morning. Notice not only does the shadow of the of the, the figure is get different, but also the color. So at eight o'clock in the morning, the sun's just getting up, so we hardly have any shadows, and we have this orangey glow on the figure. And that's because in the morning and in the evening, when the sun rises and when the sun sets, the light temperature is lower than during the lunchtime hours. So we can see that Das Studio does that for us. So it's orange now, and the later it gets in the day the bluer the character gets. This is something really nice to play around with. This is only a matter of two hours now. But you can see how much bluer the character gets in the face and how much brighter the sun gets at 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock. And now we see this phenomenon that the shadows are getting shorter. And in the morning and in the evening, the shadows are getting longer. You can see that? This is now 3 o'clock in the evening, or 3 o'clock in the afternoon. 4 o'clock in the afternoon, much longer shadows. So she is much like a sundial now, the pin in the sundial. And you could make marks here in the ground and say at which time it is what hour. And so in the evening, the shadows get even longer again. And you can see that the figure is taking on a much more orangey kind of color here. And at 8 o'clock, there doesn't seem to be any sunlight anymore. And we're talking March. I don't really know where this is, the longitude and latitude. Uh, but it appears to be somewhere in the northern hemisphere where the days are still fairly short. With the smartphone app, you can always find out your own longitude and latitude and hack those coordinates in here. And then you can see what the sun would look like at a certain date at your own position. This is useful for architectural simulations, by the way, if you're thinking, well, well what's, what's the point in that? Well, one, one thing is, if you just want to simulate an outdoor scene, uh, then, you know, this light is perfectly fine, perfectly accurate. But also, if you're thinking of an architectural building that's maybe something that's going to be opened in the future at some point, and the boss's office really needs the sunrise or the sunset or something in the, in the main big window there, then you can, then you can see if that's actually happening and perhaps even tweak your building accordingly. So that's what you can use it for. But there's other things that you can do with this here. So currently we're not seeing a background, but we could make that happen by going back to Dome and saying draw the Dome. Then if we do that, we can see that we actually see the simulated sky in the background. And we have so many options here. We could blur the uh, line between the horizon here. If you head over to Sky and then it's under Sun and sky horizon blur. May even save you a trip to Photoshop. As the horizon height can be adjusted, make it higher or lower. You can even increase the saturation of the image, or the saturation of the sky rather. Red blue tint, if you want to mess with that, if you want to make it a little bit more reddish. And you can introduce more haze. You can go rather wild here without having to do much work in an image processor. You can get fairly decent images out of DAS Studio literally with no post work. You can also change the effects of the sun, so make it more intense, thereby giving the character more brightness. If the sun would be in the scene, so we could go hunt for it, uh, the sun should be coming from here, so we could twist this around until it appears in the scene and we can increase or decrease the sun itself or the glow intensity. And we can also change the ground color. So if this medium gray isn't good enough for us, we can go and change it and change it to something like black, which would be way too dark because we can't see the shadows anymore. Or we can turn it to any color and, you know, whatever tickles our fancy. This is not so much for accuracy, though, where the, where the gray worked really well. This would be great for mixing it together with other sky effects, horizon effects, so that you then literally can have a blurred background here, like you have in, in Photoshop to bring out characters more. One other thing I want to show you here is the ground. Ground is happening here twice, so this is true for sun and sky as well as for working with environment maps or HDR images. One ground is associated with a dome here, 
and the other ground is associated with the environment. And if you go to that second ground that's associated with the environment, if we close dome down, then we have all these options here. Now let me focus on her feet. I zoom in there. And one thing that can be of help sometimes when you're composing your scene is the ground height. It's currently set to automatic. Ground, ground position mode is automatic. But you can also set that to manual. So I can see here that this foot is kind of touching the ground. That's quite, that's good. And she's half lifting her foot a little bit here. But you're not always going to be so lucky with poses. Sometimes it looks like the character is uh, hovering over the ground. And in those cases, you can always set this to automatic. And then you can to look, this is the ground's already changed a little bit here. You can now set the ground origin a little bit different. So if you wanted to uh, lower or make the make the ground higher, so this is sometimes what a pose can look like, that the shadows are not exactly at the at the bottom of the figure's feet. You can then adjust that until they are. I mean you can do other funky things like, you know, she's now sunk into the ground. That's probably not the effect we want, but you can adjust this very fine grain here until you have the accurate position of her literally standing on the ground with no hovering involved. Just so that you know. Oh, and then there's one other thing. You can have the ground shadow intensity. You can increase that, make the shadows harsher or less harsh, depending on your needs. If you don't want to see any shadows, you can just not draw the ground. So IRA works in a way where it gives you a free shadow catcher. The moment you say draw ground and you render this image, all we see here with the dome switched off, of course, the image will be transparent and only the shadows will be rendered. So if you then add this to uh, another image, then uh, when we're in Photoshop or whatnot, then uh, the shadows will be there, but everything else will be transparent. So figure and shadows will be there, everything else will be transparent. For this to happen, of course, you need to um, head over to environment and switch off draw dome. So then what we see gray now in the background will be transparent. But if you still don't want to see the shadows, just in case you ever get to that point, you can just switch off draw ground, so then neither the dome nor the ground will be drawn, and only your figure will be drawn. That was it. I hope this was helpful. In the next video, I'm going to talk you through some performance settings that you can tweak in order to get the most out of your hardware and the best results from NVIDIA iRay. Stay tuned.